In this video, we're going to talk about programming your feeders and specifically parts onto your feeders. So, as we learned previously, when you write a mount program for a particular board, you're going to be putting in its X and Y, or teaching it, and its rotation, and then you're going to assign a part number to it. But this part number is not a feeder number. It refers to a position in the parts database. So if we go over and we open the parts database, we'll see that position number one refers to an 0603 part. In this case, it's a resistor. Its physical location on the rail, however, is feeder location number 25. You can see where I have taken and placed my 0603 part and put it at location number 25. And this is where the machine is going to pick this part up from and place it on the board. To alleviate some confusion, it is okay to go ahead and actually call your P number 25 and then simply go into the parts database, scroll down to 25, and now you can teach this location as your part. That way when you're looking at your program and it says that you have P25 as a place where you want to place your feeder, it's also going to be location number 25. in the parts database. If you're very familiar with the system, you can do lots of things with it. If this is brand new to you, then I highly recommend you use this particular method where you use the P number in the program is exactly the same as your feeder number and it helps kind of avoid confusion. Now, to program this part, you saw where I put in a part name. This could be a value, this could be your inventory, control number, stock number, whatever you choose to put here. We know this is no 603 part, so the next thing we have to do is to tell the system that it is an 0603 part. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to click on database. And what's going to open up is the entire database that the machine has built in for many, many, many different kinds of packages. So here you see tantalums, inductors, SOC 23, 25s. There's D packs. You get into the ICs, the SOP 16, 20, 24s. And it has about 500 different packages already built into it. Here are some QFPs. And it's based on pin count. So this one is saying it's a QFP 100, it's a 100 pin count. Its pitch on its leads is 0.5 millimeters and it's 16 millimeters wide. These are all starting points. Um, a lot of them you will have to go in and massage to your particular uh, condition. It even has a few connectors in here. And at the higher numbers of 980 plus, these are built in parts that are made for calibration. That's why you see glass QFPs and dummy parts and max check. Um, these are parts that are used during the calibration process. You want to reuse them when you're actually making a board. Now, the important thing to remember is in the parts database, location 1 through 499 is user defined. We can put whatever we want in here. You can see where I put in my own part numbers. So in these locations, over time, you can train your own parts, save them to these locations, and then you can start pulling up your parts by the actual part number or inventory number that you have in your system. You don't have to rely on the actual size of it. Uh, that comes in really handy when you have a bomb and you want to just take that bomb and the numbers on it and put it directly into the program. You just find them here. So in this case I was doing my 603 so I am going to choose 603 and I'm going to say set set writes it from the database into my program and so now you'll see that all the parameters for this part have been populated again 
This is a nice little system in that it tells you exactly what each of the parameters is for your little graphic, that you'll use an 8mm feeder, that it takes a Type 72 nozzle to place that, you know, how are you going to get rid of it if it's got a problem, um, and then its database number we'll get to in a minute. So then it has various parameters for its pick, its pick angle, how fast you want to pick it up, how you're going to move it. Mount has the same kind of thing, speed. So how fast you're going to lower that part down to place it on the board. The bigger parts obviously do slower. Vision is all about how the vision system is going to identify the part. And it has again graphics that explain uh, the various things you can do for lighting and position. Shape refers to the actual XY dimensions of the part. Like I said, sometimes you need to customize it because while everybody says, oh, it's an 0805 cap, uh, the reality is there is slight variations in their dimensions. And so an ABX versus a Vache might have different parameters to it. And you would simply enter that here to compensate for it. If it's a tray part, you would call it out here, in which case a whole new set of parameters open up to ask you information about the tray, what's the pitch, how many uh, parts are in the tray, those kind of questions. And then if we had options, which you want to turn on right now, uh, those would be filled here. But let's go back to the basics. So the biggest thing we want to do is to make sure that the vision system can recognize the part. If the vision system can't recognize the part, it's not going to place it. You can have a lot of errors and a lot of frustrations. So again, we go to the wonderful adjust feature and we click that and then we tell it that we want to use head one, which currently has a large nozzle on it, but it'll change it when I tell it to. And we're going to go over to that feeder and pick it up. And I'm going to turn on some vision results just so that you can kind of see what it's doing. We set it to go pick it up. It's going to change the nozzle because it has the wrong one on the head at the moment. And so now it's picked up a part. And we can go and verify that it picked up a part by going to vacuum. And it looks like I don't have my feeder indexed because this bar should be in the pink. So if there's a part on the head, the vacuum is going to be a little bit higher. It should be in this range. That tells it everything's acceptable. And we're good to go. And it's not, so we hit that, and we're going to tell it to dump and specify head. And it's going to dump that part, and let's check and make sure our feeder is indexed. Yes, it is. Now, if it turns out that our feeder isn't quite taut to the location that we thought it was, the other thing we can do is called teach. So, in this case, we're going to teach this feeder. And we hit teach. Here's our feeder number 25 is up here. The star means that I've made a change to it, but I haven't saved it yet. So whenever you see a star in your program, it simply means that bit of data hasn't been saved to an actual file name. Now, don't panic, it's not lost. Any change you made is updated automatically and kept inside the memory. But at the end, you want to save the program out completely before you exit. And if you try and exit without saving, it'll stop you and make you save. All right, so the first thing we want to do is to trace. And that drives the head back over that feeder location. So then we can go on to the screen and see if it's entered or not. <clears throat> Excuse me. So by pushing the feeder open close, pretty self-explanatory. We can actually open that shutter and see if our crosshairs are aligned in that pocket. And that's pretty good. I don't think I need to make any adjustments there. That's pretty centered. So I'll close that and it's automatically indexed to the next part. If this was off, we would use the click move function to go ahead again and click on the center of the pocket. Very important, when you're teaching a feeder, you click on the center of the pocket, not the part, because parts move up and down as they index. So if we go to click move, we sit there and we visualize where the center of the pocket is. We click that, and now the crosshair is center up in the pocket. And we hit close. Now as soon as I hit that click move, obviously it's updating my data. 
Now this one is set for automatic, which means it's going to go to where the to the position that the machine thinks the feeder is at. Um, it was pretty close. I didn't need to change it, but I did change it. So what I want to do now is I need to change this to teaching. Since I've taught this part, I've moved it a little bit from its default location. I go to teaching, and now I'm going to click on teach, and it will save that data for that particular part. And we'll close this. <coughs> okay, so now let's go back to adjust. And let's pick it up. And again, we're going to use head one. We'll check our vacuum. And there we go. We have a part. And it is well above the threshold for accepting that part. So that's good. And so the next thing we want to do is run test. And what test is going to do, and I'll show it this way first, it's going to fly that part against the line scan camera, which is that white glowing thing there under the head. And basically that red light comes on, it takes a picture as the part is passing over it, and then it gets displayed here on the screen. And if you really want to see what the part is, we can zoom in, and there's the part on the head after it passed over that camera. Here's some relative data on what it found about the dimensions of the part, how much it's off. That data is adjustable and variable if you want to see different things. But what we're looking for is the fact that it did succeed in the vision test, which means the machine can see it, it does recognize it. Now that we're all done, we're going to dump it. And yes, I'll dump all heads. So now that part is taught and it is ready to go. The machine will pick it up, it will place it, it'll be happy with it. And you'll continue to do this to any and all of the parts that you have in your system to make sure that the vision is all done. So now I have a part here that I like. I've trained it in the vision, I know it's good, and I want to keep it. And I want to keep it under a part number that is in my inventory. Okay, so in this case I'll call it a 532-001-04. Uh, Let's just say that's my part numbering structure that I have at my company for a particular resistor. I can even sit there for ease and say that, oh yes, this is a 1K resistor. Um, this particular computer or system that is on this machine does not like spaces. You'll lose data. So you always have to put in an underscore or a dash in between your data so that it doesn't drop it off. Okay, and we'll enter that. Okay, so now it's there. And so we want to save this. So again, we go to database. And here's our database, but this time we're going to click new. And we're going to tell it we're going to assign a new part number based on the one that I have highlighted. And it'll ask me which one do you want to put it into? And I'm going to copy that into location number two. And I'll hit OK. And it'll give me a screen saying it just copied component number 25 into database number 2. So now I have just saved that part with all its vision information and my inventory control number into the actual database. So no matter what program I'm in, when I go to a database and I open it to get part information, I will now see this number and I can go ahead and bring it into a program. And this is how we set up. Uh, a database that's built off of your parts, your inventory numbers. Yes, it takes a while to, to go through it the first time, uh, but once it's built, you know, it's easy to manage and you just add parts as things come up. So that is the basics for getting a part, bringing it in, teaching it on the vision, teaching it to a location uh, on the feeder bar.